Hey, this is Mr. Masonette, and what we're going to do in this tutorial is we're going to practice using algebra to solve a word problem. So let's go ahead and read the problem so we can start thinking about how we're going to approach this problem. So the problem reads that one car leaves Chicago headed towards Cleveland, a distance of 343 miles. At the same time, a second car leaves Cleveland headed towards Chicago. The first car averages 50 miles per hour. The second car averages 48 miles per hour. How long will it take the cars to meet? Okay, so here's how I am visualizing this problem in my mind. So I know that we have two cities. We have Chicago and we have Cleveland. And the first car is leaving Chicago, headed towards Cleveland at a rate of speed that is 50 miles per hour. And the second car, which is leaving Cleveland going towards Chicago, is traveling at 48 miles per hour. So right away, we know that the two cars are traveling at different speeds. Now, the total distance between the two cities is 343 miles in total. So what we should understand is that when these two cars actually meet somewhere along this 343 miles, the first car will have traveled a little bit further than the other car because this car here, which is leaving Chicago, is going a little bit faster. So it is covering a greater distance in the same amount of time. So that means along this route here, it's going to be a little bit past the halfway point. And what the problem wants us to do is figure out how long it actually takes the two cars to meet. Now remember, it said that the two cars left at the same time. So a certain amount of time will have passed, the same amount of time, for both cars when the two cars meet up. And the first car will have traveled a greater distance than the second car. So we could say that both cars will have experienced the same time but they will have traveled different distances. And that's going to be really important with how we approach this problem. Because if we think about the relationship as a function between x and y, considering that x is going to be our time and y is going to be distance, we should understand that we are looking for an x that is the same. However, the y is going to be different. This isn't like a system of equations problem where we can just find two equations and find the same x and the same y because the x and the y values will not be the same. They will only have the same x values. Now, here's how I kind of think about this problem. So the first car, when the two cars will meet up, will have traveled a certain distance when they meet up. And the other car, which left Cleveland, will have traveled a different distance. And we should understand that whenever these two cars meet up at some point, that these two distances together would be a total of 343 miles. But the time it took to meet will be the same. So what we're going to do is we're going to set up an equation that represents the rate of speed that the first car is traveling and separately set up an equation to represent the rate of speed that the second car is traveling. And then we're going to take the expressions and we're going to add them together and set them equal to a total of 343. All right, so what we're going to do is we are going to write an equation that represents the rate of speed that the first car is traveling, the one that left Chicago, headed towards Cleveland. Now, x represents the amount of time, which is our input, and y is our output, which is the total distance. Now, for the first car, it says that it is traveling at 50 miles per hour, which means we can substitute slope with 50. However, what we're going to do in this case is we're going to write negative 50. And I will explain why in a moment. And B, which is our y-intercept, is going to be 343. Now, here's why this equation would work. 
It is because, let's say for instance, you wanted to see how many more miles you had remaining on your trip if you would have traveled one hour. What you would do is you would substitute X with one. And you would take that one and multiply it by negative 50, which gives you negative 50. So what we would say is after one hour passed, this car would have traveled 50 miles. So we can subtract 50 miles from 343 to see how many miles are remaining on that trip. And if we were to do that, we would have a total of 293 miles remaining on that trip. And for car B, we would say that Y is equal to negative 48 times X. So for each hour of time that passes, car number two will have traveled 48 miles that we could subtract from the total of the total distance to see how many miles that car has left on its trip. So if we wanted to see how many miles would be remaining if one hour would pass, we would multiply 48 by one hour, which gives us negative 48, and we would add negative 48 to positive 343, which gives us a total of 295 miles to go on the trip. Now, our job is to determine how long it's going to take the two cars to meet up. Now, we should know that it is not one hour because if one car had 293 miles left to go and one car had 295 miles left to go, and if we were to add those together, it's supposed to be a total of 343, which we know is not the case. But we do know that we are looking for a time that is the same time, even though the distances are going to be different. So basically what we're doing is we are looking for a number that we could plug into this equation and into this equation that will give us two different distances at the end that can be added to get 343 miles. So car number one, which left Chicago, will have traveled a certain distance in the same amount of time and the other car which left Cleveland headed toward Chicago will meet the other car at that same amount of time but will have traveled a different distance and the distance of the first car from here to here will be represented by this equation right here negative 50 X plus 343 and the other car is represented by negative 48x plus 343. And what we could say is that this car will have traveled a certain distance and this car would have traveled a different distance. But we know that if we were to add those two distances together, that was achieved in the same amount of time that total distance would be 343. So basically what we're going to do is we're going to take this right here and this right here, and we're going to add those expressions together, and it should be equal to 343 in total. All right, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to go ahead and get rid of all this right here because the answer is not one hour. That was just for demonstration purposes, just to illustrate a concept. So we're going to get rid of where we plugged one in for X. All right. And what we're going to do is we are going to take this expression here and this expression, each with the variable X, which represents time. And we're going to take those two expressions and we are going to add them together. So we're going to take this and we're going to add it to this. So whatever X is equal to, after we were to plug it in and solve, 
the total of each one of these expressions has to be 343 miles. So now we have a situation where we can actually solve for x and figure out the exact amount of time it would take for both cars to meet. So what we're going to do first is we're going to simplify this equation a bit by combining like terms. So we're going to combine our x terms first. So negative 50x and negative 48x is negative 98x. And positive 343 and positive 343 is positive 686. And that is equal to 343 total miles. All right, now we have to isolate our variable x. And we start by taking our constant of 686 and subtracting it on both sides of our equation. So everything on the left cancels, or I should say the constant cancels out, leaving us with negative 98x on the left. And on the right, we have negative 343. Now, the next thing we have to do is take our coefficient of negative 98 and divide that on both sides of our equation. So on the left, negative 98 divided by itself, of course, is positive 1, leaving us with just a positive x. And now we have to divide negative 343 by negative 98. Now we know a negative divided by a negative is a positive. So I'm going to go off to the side here and do some quick math here. I'm just going to take 343 and divide it by 98. I'm not even going to worry about writing the negatives because I know the answer is going to be positive. So I know that three sets of 98 would fit into 343, which would give me 294. And then I subtract this, which gives me 49. And then I'm going to add a decimal here, put a zero in the tens place, and continue my division. And 98 fits into 490 exactly five times. So we would say that both cars would meet up 3.5 hours after they both left their cities at the same time. Hey, I just want to say thanks for checking out this math tutorial. Please don't forget to hit that subscription button and activate notifications so you can be informed as I upload new math tutorials that just might help you with your math homework. Until next time, this is Shane Masonette with Masonette Math.